this is gonna be a pretty long video so be prepared for that and let's get started hey what's up guys through here and as you can see this is the final output and this is the original picture and i'm gonna show you how to do each and every single thing and before we start the tutorial two important things one if you want to use any image that i use in this tutorial the download link is in description so please check it out and second thing is that it is not a beginner friendly video as you can see there are lots and lots of things going on because if you are watching this manipulation tutorial i would expect you to have some kind of basic knowledge with tools and let's say even if you don't have any basic knowledge i will still recommend watching this video half of the things might go over your head but you might find some really interesting things that uh, you never knew and you might want to learn them and it is always fun to watch other people work in photoshop uh, so as you can see here this is my original photo now first of all as you can see it's a png file so you don't have to cut out the background that's one really big relief now let's add the background so i'm gonna go to file and go to place uh, and here as you can see i have all of my stocks so i'm gonna go and select this building stock and place it uh, first let's confirm it and put it under my model now I'm gonna press ctrl T again uh, and let's make it bigger here's a tip hold alt and shift and then make it bigger so you can make it big uh, from all angles so that's looking pretty good confirm it now I'm gonna adjust the model uh, so go select your layer 0 go and put him somewhere around here I want him in complete center so do that and don't worry about this empty space i will show you how to fill that up uh, some of you might already know this so i'm gonna make him a little bit smaller uh, and put him here then go and confirm it and i'm gonna go and adjust the buildings again so now the basic composition is ready and let's fill up this area so select layer zero select your lasso tool polygon lasso uh, and then I'm gonna go and make a selection around here somewhere something like this uh, and then press shift backspace and I'm gonna use content aware hit ok and it will fill up it for you uh, then let's press ctrl D to remove the selection okay entire basic setup is ready now let's go and blur the background a little bit so we have some depth of fill for that activate your background then press ctrl J so we have a copy then right click and select rasterize so we can apply the filled blur so I'm gonna go to filter blur and go and select fill blur now this is a very high resolution image so just don't go and like uh, take the slider to the other angle it will hang the photoshop so careful uh, so in my numbers uh, I think 15 was pretty okay uh, I think it's uh, from the last time I worked on this file uh, and let's go and try to add some bokeh so let's go and do some light bokeh to see if we have something okay so somewhere around 40 50 percent and in the 23 percent here it looks pretty good that's way too strong uh, let's go and dim the light a little bit really nice Another thing, don't blur it way too much. It might look good for a second, but in end effect, it doesn't look good. So realistic is better. So go and hit OK. So if I turn it on and off, as you can see, it really helps to separate subject from the background. Now, you know what? I'm going to make my canvas a little bit bigger. So select your crop tool uh, and let's, I'm going to keep the sky entire. So go and confirm it pretty good now before we do anything on the model let's finish the work for the background so i'm gonna go and let's select the model uh, now i'm gonna go and create a new adjustment layer and i'm gonna select curves and i'm gonna make this a tiny bit brighter nothing else uh, that's i think enough uh, let's turn it on and off now what i want to do is make it look like night now you might be wondering why in the world did you make it bright if you wanted to make it look like night because uh, i'm gonna have some lighting here and i want my subject uh, to a sort of silhouette a bit darker i'm gonna explain as the tutorial goes just roll with it so i'm gonna go and create a new blank layer uh, select my gradient tool right click gradient and in the gradient uh, you have to select this foreground to transparent hit okay uh, you know what i'm gonna make it black so we have a transparent gradient with black color now just like every time hold your shift key and draw it just easy as that now once the gradient is done we have to adjust it so simply press ctrl t now here's the tip you know when you make it big to fade out more 
hold your alt key and then make it bigger so it will expand in both direction and you will have more softer output faster so let's go and do it uh, let's go and make it a little bit more bigger and then do it something like this confirm it so if I turn it on and off the difference it makes is amazing so let's go and make it a little bit more bigger nice now let's go and add the stars so for that again go to file where is it the place and here I have this ready-made image so go and place it uh, and let's put it here uh, and confirm it so first of all let's just directly go and change its blending mode to screen so we can see what the hell is going on uh, pretty nice uh, and now we have to use the same stars here so don't be a smart ass and just make ctrl j make a copy and put this one here it, it looks like it's just the copy of it don't do that so press ctrl t right click and this time i'm gonna flip this one horizontal then i'm gonna flip this one vertical so they are in kind of different direction uh, and i'm gonna use this one here nice now once you are done with both of them hold your control key and select both of them and then press ctrl e so it will look something like this chill out uh, i'm gonna go and keep them stars simple names uh, and then go and change this blending mode to screen uh, then go to image adjustment and where is it levels and here i'm gonna use the slider to make them fade a little bit more because i don't want those crazy stars uh, hit ok and since the background is blur we will also have to blur the stars a little bit so right click convert them to smart object so we can apply blur non-destructively so go to filter blur and gaussian blur in the gaussian blur uh, try to match it with the background that's your goal numbers don't matter it's useless so try to match it with your background pretty good hit ok and even if you screw up it's a smart object just double click here and change it anytime you want and you can also decrease the uh, what do you call opacity uh, so uh, you can fade them even more if you don't like them too much so i'm gonna keep it to 100 to see how it looks in final effect so most of the work for background is done now let's go and focus on the model so activate your model layer and the big problem we have here right now as you can see is this edges I tried blurring them that didn't work uh, and it always looked fake like like we just copy pasted this image so I found a solution what I did go to file uh, and place and I found this PNG file of rocks so go and place it at first it looks hideous don't worry about it confirm it right click here and select rasterize layer uh, and grab your damn eraser tool from here and remove this logos pretty good but now we have to cut out the rocks because i don't need any of this grass or foliage so i'm gonna go and select my pen tool uh, and <laughs> if you don't know how to use pen tool you can go with this polygon or magnetic but good luck with that uh, so i'm gonna go and make a quick selection please don't judge me Once your selection is done, simply go and press Ctrl H so you have selection of the rocks. But we want to delete the outside area, so we have to inverse the selection. Go to select and where is it? Go to inverse and press delete. Press Ctrl D for removing the selection. Now select your move tool and put some rocks here. Press Ctrl T and you have to adjust it so that it looks like they are part of the surface. And as you can see, they blend in real nice. I really like this stock props to the uploader so looking pretty good uh, then go and confirm it now it's a nightmare to find something other png rock file that would match with this one so we can just simply copy paste this one so uh, first of all let's name it rock one uh, and let's make a copy of it i'm gonna press ctrl j select a move tool uh, and move this one's here uh, ctrl t right click and where is it Flip horizontal uh, and put this ones here. Go and rotate them a little bit, uh, something like this. Nice, go and confirm it. Uh, and make another copy of it. Press Ctrl J uh, and put this one here. Ctrl T, right click, flip horizontal. 
uh, and put this ones here something like this nope not matching go and make flip them here pretty horrible right <laughs> so now we have to mask them out so they blend in better so uh, you will have to mask every single rock so you can use eraser or layer mask your choice uh, so i'm gonna go and first of all this one's fine let's turn on this one activate this one so as you can see the legs are coming in the way so i'm gonna go and apply a layer mask grab my brush tool uh, in the brush i'm gonna go and select the regular round brush uh, make it smaller in the color it's black and let's remove it ah too soft uh, let's make the opacity 100 right click uh, hardness 50 percent or something uh, let's go and try removing it pretty good and uh, now let's go and remove it from here now let's go and turn on the last rock layer uh, so as you can see this looks pretty stupid here so i'm gonna go and remove oops forgot to apply layer mask so go and apply the layer mask uh, and then paint with black color. Pretty simple, right? Not really though. So select all of this rock, uh, hold your control key and select rocks, then press control G, group them. Keep grouping when your project is this big, so it's easy to manage. Rocks. Uh, so this is done. Now we have to group rock and layer zero both. So hold your control key and select this time and then press control G uh, and this time let's name it model and rocks. So the reason I did this I'm gonna explain you why because we are going to do a lot of adjustment that include model and rocks both uh, and now we are not going to touch them itself so there's no point like leaving them open so grouping is better. Now let's do some adjustment so for that go and first of all create a new blank layer and let's name it painted shadows uh, and select a brush tool color should be black uh, and in the opacity turn it to somewhere around like 20% uh, pretty good uh, make your brush bigger use your bracket keys so don't waste time uh, and before you start painting right click here and select create clipping mask so now if I paint anything it will only stay on the model uh, pretty easy so go and paint here manually then make your brush smaller and paint in certain areas we have to make it look like almost silhouette but which is not a silhouette so you get the idea so now if i turn it on and off as you can see the massive difference it makes it, it's it's all the little hard work that will pay off so uh, this is pretty good now go and create another adjustment layer and this time i'm going to select curves and just like uh, this layer i'm going to go and create a clipping mask so when we make it dark it will only affect the model so go and make it a touch dark but not too much so pretty good go and close it now the next step I'm going to do is completely random. I didn't plan it, I was just playing around and it worked out. So go and create a new adjustment layer and select gradient map. In the gradient map, uh, go here in the colors and in the color, first of all, instead of this black, go and select a bit tail color, uh, something like this, uh, not that, um, somewhere around this. Hit OK and instead of this, I'm gonna go and select an orange color. So our classic orange and teal combination. So keep it somewhere around like this. And then I'm gonna go and first of all, let's hit OK. Okay, right click and create clipping mask. So it's only on the model. Now go back to your gradient. And here in the middle slider, I'm gonna go and drag it a little bit here, this way. Uh, and then, then this middle one here, a little bit. So as you can see we have this really nice orange toning here then hit ok now in the blend mode go and make it where is it difference so it might look something like this then go and change its opacity to 10 percent or something like that uh, now if i turn it on and off looking pretty good go and close it Now let's go and create the cool stuff, the lighting and all. So the lighting will be under the model, right? So where is the model? Here. So the lighting will be under that. Now here's a tip. When you create a new blank layer and if you hold your control key, 
it creates a layer under that so just save some time uh, so let's go and name it glow uh, and in the color the orange is the glow I want in the color so let's go and keep it somewhere like this then go and make your brush massive like really big right click and make sure hardness is 0% it's very important then paint with 100% opacity so then go and paint and you will have this really cool glow effect as you can see and it will also reveal the mistakes you did in the rocks here so i think that's good enough now go and change its blending mode to color dodge pretty good now you have to make a copy of it so go and press ctrl j uh, and this time make it uh, the blending mode to screen so you will have this really cool glow effect going on now as you can see I adjusted the glow a little bit now what you can do uh, is go to your image adjustment uh, and where is it hue saturation so as you can see I selected the glow that has color dodge blend mode and here you can experiment like how much brightness you need uh, what kind of hue you are exactly looking for uh, so you want something green something more purple you can go with anything so play around until you get the tone you need and you can also play with the how much like uh, brightness you need darkness you need you get the point right so I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around here then go and hit ok and same with this glow you can play around all day I'm gonna make it slightly bigger so press ctrl T the one with the screen uh, so I'm gonna go and let's make it uh, slightly bigger uh, pretty good confirm it uh, and let's go and bring it down nice so the glow is done right now we have to add the sparkles uh, so go to file uh, place uh, and here is the sparkle image that I downloaded place it then go and confirm it and as you can see my sparkle image is under my model but on top of my glow exactly here now go and change its blending mode to screen so we have this thing here and now we also have to remove this logo so right click just rasterize this one uh, grab the eraser tool and remove it now to remove this fringe go to image adjustment levels uh, and then go and remove it uh, take it on the right side if you want to remove it take it on the left if you want to add it uh, don't know why you want to add it though so keep it somewhere around here hit ok now obviously make it smaller press ctrl T uh, make it smaller and then I'm gonna go and put this one here something like this let's go make that bigger looking pretty good confirm it now just like the rocks we're gonna make copies of it and use it to fill up the area so press ctrl j uh, grab the move tool put this one here ctrl t rotate it completely uh, something like this and since they are kind of sparkles uh, you can also use wrap so or wab however you wanna call it so I'm gonna select wab uh, and then I'm gonna go and uh, adjust it a little bit then go and confirm it and I also now make another copy so press ctrl J ctrl T uh, and adjust it uh, according to your needs so I'm gonna go and put this one a little bit here like this go and confirm it but on this one I'm gonna grab my eraser tool and I'm gonna remove the sparkles because then it will look just way too repetitive uh, so let's go and select all of them so hold your ctrl key this one all the three sparkles and you know what also select your glows uh, and then press ctrl G and name it perfect name now select your move tool and you can adjust it all day however you like so I think this is decent enough and let me also adjust this rocks here so Now let's go and create some rim lighting on the model so for that just like gradient and curves go and create a new blank layer right click create a clipping mask grab the brush tool uh, and the same orange color that we use for the background uh, should be fine uh, then go and paint on the edges and make sure hardness is 0% so go and paint the glow
Now as you can see when I painted I ignored this part where we will be adding the lava cracks and also here where we will have the fire in the hands. So I ignored those parts then go and change its blending mode to color dodge so as you can see we have that really nice rim lighting but on the sweater it's not looking good enough so I'm gonna go and paint a little bit more. So as you can see now if I turn it on and off that rim lighting fills up the area real good and now let's go to image adjustment hue and saturation and now you can adjust the saturation and hue exactly the way you want so I'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit and then adjust the hue so it matches the image properly pretty good now go and hit ok and change its opacity to somewhere around like 70% or something nice now let's go and add some lava cracks so for that go to file go to where is it place uh, and here i'm gonna go and select this uh, image that i downloaded go and place it uh, so as you can see the original image is fantastic uh, i'm gonna go and confirm it press ctrl t uh, make it smaller somewhere around here put it uh, like this you can decrease the opacity so you can see how much smaller you need to make it uh, so i'm gonna go and make it a bit more smaller uh, let's make the opacity full and here's a trick let's zoom out right click and select where is the perspective uh, perspective and then go and make it something like this so it will match the floor properly uh, let's go and make it a bit more bigger something like this nice now go and confirm it and then go and change the blend mode to screen you really thought i would change it to screen didn't you actually i'm not gonna do that I'm gonna right click here and then I'm gonna go and select the blending options and here I'm gonna go and blend it with the background didn't see that coming now did you <laughs> so go and do it uh, I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around like uh, at this point where we have this really nice cracks uh, and the glow is looking good uh, hit ok then right click and select rasterize layer you can use the layer mask okay but i'm just gonna go and use eraser the tutorial is getting way too long so just go and make the, it's erase it somewhere from here your main target is to blend it with the background do anything you can do to do that okay so go and pretty nice now go and make a copy of it so i'm gonna press ctrl j select this one and put this one's here ctrl t rotate them a little bit so they don't look very repetitive use the bottom part a little bit more uh, nice now go and confirm it and also erase it from the area where his shoes and stuff is so i'm gonna oops go and select your eraser uh, go and remove it something like this also make sure that you don't keep any of this on the rocks okay so it gives it more depth and looks like the crack is exactly there so that's how you create the lava crack you just use the ready-made images and then blend them <laughs> so i'm gonna go and select all of them uh, and let's name let's group them uh, and let's rename the group now we can also make the lava glow a little bit so what you can do create a new blank layer grab the brush tool 100 opacity soft brush you know the deal and pick up a color hold your alt key and you can pick up the color from here and then paint on the lava like this pretty nice painting we got there now go and change its blending mode to color dodge so it will look really bizarre like this uh, then go and change the opacity to somewhere around like 10% and now if I turn it on and off see the lava has really nice glow and here comes the part that a lot of you were looking for I'm pretty sure how to create those really cool fire hands so for that I'm gonna go to file uh, place and select the fire image that I downloaded go and place it uh, confirm it and change its blending mode to screen uh, and select the move tool make it a bit smaller Control T make it smaller uh, and put it exactly on his hand uh, and let's go and do this 
all you have to make sure is that it's not way too big and it covers the entire hand so go and confirm it now for this one i'm gonna use layer mask because i need now for this one i'm gonna use layer mask so go and apply a layer mask first now i want it to look like that it comes from his fingers so we need selection of the fingers so go here and where is the model here so on the model you don't have to activate the layer just simply hold your control key and click on the model uh, and you already have selection of the layers now go and activate layer mask of your fire as you can see here now we need to remove the outside so i'm gonna go to select and inverse so if i zoom out the outside area is selected now we can simply remove the fire so i'm gonna grab my brush tool i'm gonna select the black color and then i will remove it from here something like this I want it to look like that it comes from there nice now go to select uh, and where is it the deselect and then you can remove this tiny bits from here pretty nice and there that's how you create the fire and as you can see these edges are way too sharp so you can double click here uh, on the mask and then apply a little bit of feather so i'm gonna go and keep it to somewhere around like two pixels look pretty good one is better close it and the same way I'm gonna use the same image to create another hand now let's go and apply some glow to the fire so I'm gonna go and create a new layer and let's rename it now zoom in and make sure you have your brush tool selected and select a color from here something like this now make your brush a tiny bit bigger uh, and do a click here a click here now we need to paint a little bit on his pants but as you can see when I try to paint it it also goes outside which we don't need so I'm gonna go and make selection of it so go and control key and click on your model as you can see here and make sure you have activated your fire glow and now when you paint it will only affect the his jeans or pants cargo whatever is he wearing so I'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around here uh, pretty good now control D to remove the selection and then change its blending mode to screen uh, So you have this really nice glow and as you can see it's way too strong. So I'm gonna go and change the opacity somewhere around like 50% or something uh, Pretty good now. I'm gonna add some more glow for that go and create blank layer uh, Let's name it uh, Fire glow 2 uh, and in the color I'm gonna go and select another bright yellowish color uh, and then paint on the fire a little bit like this then again change its blending mode to screen so you have this really cool effect and change the opacity to somewhere on like 20% uh, looks pretty nice yep pretty cool uh, now do you see the problem here this color of this glow the spark and the hand the fire in the hands they all are same so we need to separate this fire in the hand so what i'm going to do first of all group all of this uh, so the fire starts from here and here so this is all fire and glow right so hold your control key and select all of this and then group them control g so let's name it okay so it's easy to manage we know where the fire is now i'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and i'm gonna select hue saturation and create a clipping mask now i'm not gonna change the hue entirely and make the fire somewhere on like blue or green some crazy stuff like that no i'm gonna keep it uh, close to the color but i'm gonna make it a bit more brighter i'm gonna show you how so as you can see here now the uh, if i turn off the preview uh, you can see that the color of uh, fire in hand it's separate it looks pretty good now if I turn on now if I turn on and off the preview you can see the fire in the hands uh, now it uh, looks a lot better and separates from the background uh, so let's go and play around a little bit more okay so this is the exact color I'm looking for then go and close it 
now as you can see we have this little bit of problem here so that is just the basic masking so go here and in the fire as you can see here is the problem so select your uh, layer mask black color and then simply just remove it from the edges so you can blend it a lot better so this is done and the same way select this one so i'm gonna go and erase it from the edges so now all the problems are gone and we can simply close the group so all the difficult hard work is done and now we can do some color correction so the entire image has a single tone uh, so for that I'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and gonna have a selective color uh, This will be on top of everything and it will not be a clipping mask. Okay So first of all, let's go to the reds and I'm gonna go and add a little bit of reds So you can see we have those really nice pumps uh, in the color pump uh, color pop in this uh, Lava here the sparks and everywhere. So the red is good now go and change it to neutrals in the neutrals i'm gonna go and add a little bit of contrast so go and i'm gonna add six uh, looks pretty good and then here comes the blacks uh, and then uh, remove it somewhere around like uh, seven seven looks good uh, close it so now if i turn it on and off you see the way it gives it overall tone uh, and blends the image so nicely after that go and create another adjustment layer and this time I'm gonna go and select gradient in the gradient in uh, color will be completely black here and as you can see my gradient is uh, foreground to transparent but the, I'm selecting the color black so go and keep both of them black hit ok in the style I'm gonna go and keep it radial uh, make it reverse so it's on the outside uh, and increase the scaling somewhere around like th 300 should be good Keep it somewhere around here uh, let's try 350 nice go and hit ok and then change its blending mode to where is it the soft light after that go and create the final adjustment layer and select brightness contrast and add a little bit of contrast in the image uh, not too much uh, somewhere around like 10 percent should be good uh, then go and close it now as you can see this glow on the uh, cargo jeans doesn't look that good uh, it needs some opacity reduction so go and find your fire right here as you can see and here is the glow so i'm gonna go and reduce this opacity a little bit even more so it blends nicely and that's it this is your final effect and now you can do further color correction something like go and create adjustment layer go to let's try this time curves uh, and you can go to blues and add a touch of blues uh, and then bring the yellows the standard vintage effect works here because we have yellow here and you can add a little bit of blue in this blacks uh, so works nice uh, and let's add some contrast so you can also go for this a little bit more darker look uh, it's completely up to you now you can experiment all day long so this is how I created this output uh, and it took me entire day from uh, morning to night uh, finding stocks uh, creating the composition and adjusting it all day uh, and wasting some time on 9 So that's how I did it and it's 1 a.m. in the night and I'm recording for more than an hour. So I genuinely hope that you learned something and you found this video helpful. So if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions you should definitely have questions after watching this long and confusing tutorial so uh, for the questions ask me in comment section below uh, if you want to check out more tutorials by me you can click on any of these boxes and you can also subscribe to my channel so every time i upload a new video you will get the update Plus when you click on that subscribe button, it will take you to my YouTube channel where I have tons of Photoshop tutorials just waiting for you. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.